for business, the trust deficit poses a serious threat. According to one of the recent Edelman Trust Surveys conducted in 26 markets, 82% of people said they didn't trust business leaders to tell the truth. In South Africa, the trust deficit is especially serious. It's a function of our deeply polarized society. A society that 22 years after democracy is still very much divided along socioeconomic, racial, and ideological lines. For us in business, or connected to business, the question or the choice may be between ethical business practices versus greedy, exploitative ones. A choice between terms like inclusive capitalism or conscious capitalism versus what the former British Prime Minister Ted Heath calls the unacceptable face of capitalism. But for other societal stakeholders, for many South Africans, this is not the question. This is not the choice. For them, business is seen as an inherently negative force, as something that we are better without. And these are views that we have engaged with during the course of some of the private dialogue sessions that the think tank has been running. These attitudes clearly are an expression of the trust deficit in South African society, and it threatens our future conditions for success, for business and for the country. Conversely, where there is trust, business and society flourish. Trust-based relationships with customers through treating them fairly can be a source of competitive differentiation in tough markets. Trust-based relationships with regulators can mean less onerous rules and can allow business to operate with greater speed and agility. Trust-based relationships with broader society go to the heart of business's social license to operate, of its sustainability, defined by Paul Polman, CEO of Unilever, as the right to produce profits long into the future, given to firms that contribute to human progress. And so the question is, how can business follow a more ethical trust to build trust with key stakeholders, with employees, with customers, with investors, with regulators, and with general society? And this question, I think, leads to a difficult paradox. Because you can have the best legislation and corporate governance in the world. And with King, we certainly are right up there. But if people don't buy into the underlying values, the impact is limited. At best, people will comply in a shallow fashion. You'll have a tick box exercise. At worst, you'll have circumventions and even violations. For many, there might be a grudging acceptance of compliance as a necessary cost for doing business. But the ethical principles underpinning it are not necessarily treated as integral to business success. They can become an add-on, peripheral, the preserve of those working in the areas of compliance, governance, and sustainability, but seen as a nuisance or an irritation by those working with PL. In a similar vein, I think, CSI, for all the wonderful impact that it's had, tends to occupy a peripheral role, detached from the core commercial activities of a business. An executive at the Royal Bank of Scotland once described CSI as something we think about on Friday afternoons. And so the question is, how do we move ethics from the periphery to the center? How do we make ethics an integral part of our business models so that compliance becomes less of a goal and more of an outcome? Not so much an end in itself, but a natural byproduct of doing the right thing. How do we go beyond CSI? Perhaps by following a shared value-based approach so that addressing ethical and social challenges becomes a part of our core commercial activities. 
But at the same time, in the face of sometimes intense shareholder pressures, how do businesses take a more long-term approach, a more stakeholder-orientated approach? And furthermore, contrary to what some seem to believe, business is not all-powerful. So where does its role, where does its responsibilities end? The Ethics and Governance Think Tank aims to develop thought leadership around these questions. Thought leadership, which we hope will in due course influence long-term attitudes and behaviors in South African business.